Hi, I'm Reverend Rebecca Luter, the pastor here at Farmington Presbyterian. Welcome to this parenting workshop. As a church, our mission is to provide a home for your family with a heart for God's world. And we hope that Farmington Presbyterian feels like a home to your family. Part of our commitment to partnering with you through the day school is to support you as parents. And so tonight, our workshop is on ways to show your child love. It is titled, titled, Yes, Child, I Love You. We are born dependent, completely dependent. We need someone to care for us in every way, to comfort us, to feed us, to change us. And the first thing that we are learning in that time is how to trust as we receive love. And our senses are the way we do that. In fact, your children, when they were about 18 weeks of gestation, before they were even born, began to be able to hear. And they could hear their mother's heartbeat. They could hear the sounds outside the womb. And over the weeks, around 27 to 30 weeks gestation, your child started to recognize and react to voices and noises that filtered into the womb. And then when a child is born, skin-to-skin contact is really important for them. It provides significant benefits even for their physicality. It regulates their heartbeat. It helps them regulate their temperature. It protects them against infections. It promotes the feeling of calm and well-being both between the mother and the baby. Within four days of your child being born, they could recognize your face. We learn to trust quickly, and we begin to receive love. We all have an emotional love tank. Now, some of us might be drivers who look at the gas and say, oh, I have plenty of gas to make it. I'll get gas later. And others of us might be people who say, I need to head straight to the gas station and fill up my tank. But none of us want our children's love tank to run on empty. Full love lets our children grow and learn and flourish. And when their tank is low, we begin to see negative behaviors you would be amazed at how fast we see children go from compliant, wonderful children to children trying to get attention because any attention is better than no attention if their love tank is beginning to run low. As they grow, children need a steady diet of unconditional love, the kind that isn't dependent on how they perform, whether they do a good job or not, whether they win or not, what they do or what they don't do. Because when we love them no matter what, they get a sense of their innate worth, and that helps grow their self-esteem. And kids who are secure in knowing that they can fail and they're still going to be loved, are much more willing to go out and take a risk or to be brave or to dare or to try something new. And that's exactly what we want our children to do because that's how they become entrepreneurs and that's how they learn and grow and succeed in life. You'd be amazed, though, how fast we can drain that tank and how much it takes to fill it back up or balance it back out. John Gottman has been studying marriages for years, and he has found what he now calls the magic five-to-one ratio to improve any relationship. And I know from marriage counseling and um, couples counseling and and sessions that coaches always tell me, oh, it's seven-to-one, and it used to be seven-to-one. John Gottman started out saying the ratio was seven positive interactions to one negative interaction. And then I saw some research that showed 5.6 positive interactions could balance one negative. Now, um, he says five to one. Regardless, what we know is it takes several positive interactions just to balance 
one negative experience or one negative interaction. And the more we can manage, the better. Love is a verb, and it has to be given and received. When we don't feel love, we can still do love. And interestingly, it is only as we do love that we feel love. We ha all have sort of a go-to way that we give and receive love. Children are learning how to give and receive love, and so it's really important that we not label them too fast and let them try out all different ways of receiving and giving love until they learn what their love language is. But it is important as parents and people who care about children that we pay attention to what their preferences are and really lean into them. If you want to know more about the five love languages, I do recommend this book. Um, it's by Gary Chapman and Ross Campbell. It is titled, The Five Love Languages of Children. Um, you may be familiar with the original one that focuses on giving and receiving love in marriage. Gary Chapman's concept is that we all have preferred ways that we communicate love, and it really has stood the test of time. He wrote the first book on it about 30 years ago, and it's been adapted now to relationships in the workplace and friendships and even to parenting. Now, whether there are only five or whether they are determined by your nature when you're born or how you are nurtured as you grow up, those five love languages can be important in our experiences and help us make our relationships stronger. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned this the last time. Um, there's a little device that most of us carry around in our pocket or our purse. Most of us are not without it for very long. It has a buzzing feature and it can make noise as well. It's your child's greatest competition. When you or your child are focused on it, you're not communicating with each other. Now, when Facebook first came out, I was scrolling through one day, and I was commenting on my friend's posts one evening as my family was sitting around in our den, and each of us was sort of doing our own thing. My husband was working on some work, and my son was doing homework, and my daughter was playing. She was about four at the time. And my husband said, why don't you join us and be social to me? And my daughter said, Dad, she is being social, just not with us. Those little devices have a place in our lives. And we have a responsibility to maintain their boundaries so they don't take up our children's place. Now to the five love languages. The first love language is physical touch. Physical touch um, includes things like hugging, kissing, giving them a pat on the back, a hand, arm around the shoulder, holding their hand on a walk, giving a high five, fixing their hair, scratching their back. If you look at these pictures, you'll see a mother with two children playing outside, a father reading a book while he has his arms around his children, a family watching television, a dad playing on an iPad with his son. All of these are ways to incorporate physical touch into quality time. And I think it's really important to find ways to get those double bonuses where you're, you're doing one thing, but you're also doing another. You're showing love in more than one way. Um, so think about that as you um, go about your day. How are, what are some ways that you can incorporate putting your hand on your child's shoulder or as you're driving, reaching back and patting them on the knee? All of those things communicate care and love and security. Some other things you might do are um, get your child a Snuggie 
or a, um, a weighted blanket if they have trouble at night sleeping, um, or a lovey. All of those things are ways for your child to experience comforting touch and love through them. The next is one that everybody loves, um, gifts. Now, gifts should not be a reward for behavior that's expected. But gifts can be really special when they're a surprise or a reward for noticing that your child really went the extra mile. Just a small reward for a job well done um, or a little gift when they wake up in the morning, something beside their plate at breakfast. Um, sometimes those countdown gifts before a holiday, um, I'm thinking of a particular countdown gift that happens often in December until Christmas. Um, or maybe a treasure chest with some trinkets to give at unexpected times. Um, anything that you might find at the Dollar Tree or Dollar Store can be something that is special to your child just as a little happy. And it can communicate love, and some children really receive love that way. The third is words of affirmation. Here I've made a word cloud. Um, you can make word clouds for free online. You can use it as an opportunity even to make a word cloud with your child. Let them choose what shape they want and then begin to choose words. And you might even say, we're studying the letter B this week in school, and so tell me some words that start with B. And they might say bat and ball and um, book, and you might say beautiful and brave. And so you can start incorporating words that extend their vocabulary, help them know what starts with a letter, and at the same time, you can talk about where you see your child being brave, where you see them, the beauty in them. Um, so that is one way to be creative and, and teach your child at the same time you're expressing love to them. There's also a game that you can play going back and forth. Um, you can play it either with words um, that start with a particular letter of the alphabet or just back and forth um, to say, I like your and then say what it is. I like your attitude. I like your beauty. I like your creativity. I like your, um, but you get the idea. You just keep going, and they can go back to you um, with what they like about you. Use encouraging words often. Praise your children often. Um, sometimes it's helpful to have a little loving nickname. It makes them feel secure and special. Um, I have, I have a monkey and a frog at my house, and now the frog has turned into a lizard. Don't ask me. They've, they're now almost 18 and 15. So um, the, the names have changed over the years, but they know that those are our special pet names for them. Um, praise your children in front of others and praise them in ways that they can overhear you. Um, tell, tell their grandparents things that they've done on the phone and let them overhear how proud you are of them. Uh, notice what they like. And then another way to show them words of affirmation is to put a note in their lunchbox. Um, I did that for my children for a long, long time. And it started out with just a smiley face when they were three. And then um, I would draw an eye and a heart. And uh, then I started with a U. I started with a smiley face, and then I had a U. And then I started writing out Y-O-U. And then I started turning the I into the letter I. So that they began to even recognize sight words through their lunch napkins every day. And by the time they were older, there were pumpkins on them, trees, eggs, depending on the season of the, of the year. Um, just be creative with it. But it is a way for your child in the middle of the day to have a reminder of you and of your love for them. They need you. Their favorite time of day is when you come to pick them up from school. They've been waiting all day long to see you. And so it's really important when you see them again to give them that quality time, to be present to them. Again, that phone in your pocket um, is hard for them when they have been waiting all day to see you and have your attention. So if you can 
Take care of whatever business you need to take care of before you come into the building. That's always wonderful. Because the first thing they really need is to reconnect with you and to have your eye contact, to have your hand, to physically be connected to you, to get a hug, um, and for you to ask them questions about their day. All of those are ways that you are showing them love. If you look at these pictures, um, you'll see in the top right a mother on the floor making eye contact with her infant. Eye contact helps our children with their fine motor development. It helps with their learning to write. And so if you're really concerned about your child's academics, please, please spend time helping them learn to make eye contact with you. It's also incredibly important for interaction and communication. Um, we find more and more preschool children are not able to maintain eye contact because it's uncomfortable for them, because they haven't had that practice. And so I encourage you to be intentional about spending time making eye contact with your children. Um, learn something new with them. Help them learn how to do something. Um, if they want to learn how to ride a bike or make a cake or um, play a new game, all of those things are ways to spend quality time together, away from screens, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, let them help you with special tasks, even. And that takes us to the final of the love languages, acts of service. One of the best things that you can do for your child for an act of service is to say, how can I make your day better? Let them answer you. Let them think about that. What would make their day better if you did it? And then try to do that. Um, let them help you with, with tasks around the house and let them help you with serving other people. Um, from a very young age, my children went with me to the soup kitchen and to Room in the Inn and to Rise Against Hunger and to other opportunities to serve in the community. They came here for yard cleanup days and we raked leaves. Um, all of those things are ways to spend time with your children that's quality time, that's time that conversations can happen that otherwise wouldn't happen, and ways to teach them how to serve, how to care for others. And it's also a great way for you to express your care for your child. One of my favorite things to do is to clean my children's room when they're gone to school and surprise them. I don't do it very often, um, but when I do, they love it. So um, think about ways that you could even pick up their chores and, um, and offer that as a surprise and just say, I wanted to spend the time with you that it would have taken for you to do that. Or join them in doing it. If they're learning how to pick up the playroom, pick it up with them and say, I'm doing this so that we can spend more time together and have fun sooner. So how do children receive love? The easiest way to sort of start testing how your child receives love is to notice how they automatically give love. If you notice that your child is very prone to sitting next to you when you're watching television, I have one child who whenever I watch television with this child gets closer and closer and closer to me until I have a head on my shoulder. I love that. I have another child who lays in my lap and wants me to play with her hair. Um, those are indications that your child is receiving love through physical touch. And so you might want to be intentional about holding their hand, about sitting close to them, about giving them hugs. You might notice that your child is really good at giving gifts. I have a child who loves to go to Five Below and make these elaborate gift baskets for her friends because giving gifts is one of her love languages. And so she is very intentional about gift giving, which means that I want to do more to help her choose gifts for other people, to develop that ability to love others. Um, and also, I like to purchase small surprise gifts for her um, or make her a card or um, sometimes I'll make her a treat that's special as a gift 
because she receives love through special, thoughtful gifts. Um, you might notice that your child gives compliments often. Um, maybe they say, oh, I like your outfit, or oh, I like your hair, or um, you did a good job. Maybe they always have kind things to say to other people. If they do, then notice that, compliment them, and encourage them. Use words to encourage them. The fourth way your child might be showing you love is by seeking out quality time with you. Um, do they ask you to play with them? Um, I can remember when I played a lot of Thomas the Tank Engine and American Girl dolls and Legos and then puzzles because my children asked me if I would and if I had time. And so if I said, no, I don't have time, then I made time as soon as I could because it showed them that I loved them and I wanted to spend time with them. Um, if your child asks to go with you to run errands, let them. They might, first of all, as they get older, they might have something they want to talk about in the car. But it's also a wonderful time to connect, to laugh together, to just enjoy the day and still get some things done. And then the final way is acts of service. If you notice that your child asks, how can I help? Or is um, often doing little things for other people, um, sneaking around to do something nice or kind for somebody else, uh, their love language might be acts of service. And so you might show them love by doing their chores for them as a surprise or helping them on occasion or um, joining them, making plans to do things for somebody else um, as a way to serve others. All of this comes down to one thing. Love is the foundation of all of our relationships. And so we want to help you have a strong foundation of love with your children. And on behalf of Farmington Presbyterian Church and Day School, I thank you for allowing us to love your children. And we want you to know that we are thankful that you are a part of the Farmington family. Thanks for being with us 